Nikola Tesla. 40 quotes about science, energy, and the future. Deficient observation is merely a form of ignorance. The history of science shows that theories are perishable. With every new truth that is revealed, we get a better understanding of nature and our conceptions and views are modified. The scientific man does not aim at an immediate result. He does not expect that his advanced ideas will be readily taken up. His work is like that of the planter, for the future. There is scarcely a subject that cannot be mathematically treated and the effects calculated or the results determined beforehand from the available theoretical and practical data. Science is but a perversion of itself unless it has as its ultimate goal the betterment of humanity. Electrical science has revealed to us the true nature of light, has provided us with innumerable appliances and instruments of precision, and has thereby vastly added to the exactness of our knowledge. Electrical science has disclosed to us the more intimate relation existing between widely different forces and phenomena. Particles of light are written notes. A bolt of lightning can be an entire sonata. A thousand balls of lightning is a concert. One day man will connect his apparatus to the very will work of the universe. The very forces that motivate the planets in their orbits and cause them to rotate will rotate his own machinery. It will become next to impossible to contract disease germs or get hurt in the city and country folk will go to town to rest and get well. When wireless is perfectly applied, the whole earth will be converted into a huge brain. It will soon be possible to transmit wireless messages around the world so simply that any individual can carry and operate his own apparatus. In a time not distant, it will be possible to flash any image formed in thought on a screen and render it visible at any place desired. You may live to see man-made horrors beyond your comprehension. The scientists from Franklin to Morse were clear thinkers and did not produce erroneous theories. The scientists of today think deeply, instead of clearly. Today's scientists have substituted mathematics for experiments, and they wander off through equation after equation, and eventually build a structure which has no relation to reality. Thomas Edison and I experimented day and night holidays not accepted. His existence was made up of alternate periods of work and sleep in the laboratory. He had no hobby, cared for no sport or amusement of any kind, and lived in utter disregard of the most elementary rules of hygiene. So great and uncontrollable was his passion for work. Edison was, by far, the most successful and probably the last exponent of the purely empirical method of investigation. 
Everything he achieved was the result of persistent trials and experiments, often performed at random, but always attesting extraordinary vigor and resource. Edison's mind was dominated by one idea, to leave no stone unturned, to exhaust every possibility. Edison's method was inefficient in the extreme, for an immense ground had to be covered to get anything at all, unless blind chance intervened. If Edison had a needle to find in a haystack, he would not stop to reason where it was most likely to be, but would proceed at once with the feverish diligence of a bee, to examine straw after straw. If Mr. Edison had thought smarter, he wouldn't sweat as much. Einstein's relativity work is a magnificent mathematical garb, which fascinates, dazzles and makes people blind to the underlying errors. The theory is like a beggar clothed in purple whom ignorant people take for a king. Its exponents are brilliant men, but they are metaphysicists, rather than scientists. I am even grateful to Einstein and others, because through their erroneous theories they lead mankind away from that dangerous path I followed. Marconi is a good fellow. Let him continue. He is using 17 of my patents. Gain more energy, waste less energy, spend the energy so next time you'll need less to achieve more. The three possible solutions of the great problem of increasing human energy are answered by the three words, food, peace, work. Food to increase the mass, peace to diminish the retarding force, and work to increase the force accelerating human movement. Electric power is everywhere present in unlimited quantities and can drive the world's machinery without the need of coal, oil, gas, or any other of the common fuels. No free energy device will ever be allowed to reach the market. I am trying to awaken the energy contained in the air. These are the main sources of energy. What is considered as empty space is just a manifestation of matter that is not awakened. There is no energy in matter other than that received from the environment. All peoples, everywhere, should have free energy sources. If we use our fuel to get our power, we are living on our capital, and exhausting it rapidly. This method is barbarous, and one only wasteful. If we want to reduce poverty and misery, if we want to give to every deserving individual, what is needed for a safe existence of an intelligent being, we want to provide more machinery, more power. The harness of waterfalls is the most economical method known for drawing energy from the sun. With every form of energy obtained without effort, from the store forever inexhaustible, humanity will advance with giant strides. The universal utilization of water power and its long distance transmission will supply every household with cheap power and will dispense with the necessity of burning fuel. 
I hold that space cannot be curved. For the simple reason that it can have no properties. It might as well be said that God has properties. He has not. But only attributes. And these are of our own making. The idea of atomic energy is illusionary. But it has taken so powerful a hold on the minds. That although I have preached against it for 25 years. There are still some who believe it to be realizable. Thank you for watching and for supporting us.